So now we are getting very close to the modern climate change or global warming so that we can transition into future climate change. So this topic is called modern climate change. The biggest thing to learn here is that we have been measuring carbon dioxide very actively in the last 70 or 80 uh, years. But before that going to the uh, beginning of the industrial revolution, we have a very good sense of how much carbon dioxide we started emitting because fossil fuels like coal, uh, petrol, natural gas, etc. are very valuable commodities. So, we always track how much we produced, how much we consumed. So, that gives us a sense of how carbon dioxide has increased. It is measurable very accurately and precisely, but we are always trying to worry about how it is affecting the temperature. The temperature does not just track carbon dioxide even though now it is tracking it more and more closely, but the temperatures have ups and downs. So, we must understand this rather non-intuitive relation between greenhouse gas increases and temperature changes. So, we will reinforce the concept of natural variability or internal variability. We will learn things like El Nino, La Nina uh, and other oscillations in the system which are created internally so that we can understand where the heat is going that is being produced by increased greenhouse gases and how the human fingerprints are obvious by looking at the various parts of the upper and lower atmosphere, oxygen in the air other than greenhouse gases, methane, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, sulphates and so on and how much heat is escaping to space, patterns of warming in the ocean. So, we will have learned ocean circulation, various cells in the atmosphere, how they interact with each other how they are related to equator to pole temperature gradient and with global warming how the gradient changes, how the energy transport changes, how the ocean circulation changes and so on. So, collecting of evidences from all spheres gives us more and more confidence about human fingerprints. And then we use the models to see how the warming has happened and how it would have been if there were no global warming, there were no fossil fuel emissions from human beings. So, that is detecting the warming signature and attributing it to various causes, how much is human contribution, how much is natural. So, we for that we track all the forcings in terms of changes in sunspots, so solar forcing, black carbon on snow, water vapor changes in the troposphere and the stratosphere. You would have already learned what stratosphere is, what troposphere is tropospheric ozone, volcanoes, changes in forestation, agriculture, urbanization and so on and so forth. So, the idea in this chapter is really not to just track all the changes that have happened, but also understand how the energy balance has been changing, what are the causes for the energy balances and what is the human contribution and how they are affecting the climate over this 20th century and into the 21st century. So, that can begin to think about where we are headed as with the climate change and global warming.